All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode here at Go Rails. In this episode, we're going to look at some guidelines that you can use to help keep your Rails model files organized, okay? Now, you may have your own methodology of uh, how you like to keep your models files organized, and that may work well when it's just you by yourself. But if you have more than one person uh, contributing to your application and everybody's adding and removing code from the model files, um, it's pretty. it can be nice to have some sort of organizational guidelines that y'all follow in order to keep things uh, uniform as you jump around from model to file to model file, you know where all of the certain things that you may be looking for or looking to add to a given model file need to go or where they are living. So what we're going to use uh, here is something that I stumbled upon um, a while back. I don't remember how I heard about this or came across this. This is a repository called Rails Standards by Nate Hopkins. Um, and over in the about section here, you can see this a developer's guides of practices to follow when building rails applications. Now there's a lot of information in this, in the readme of this repository. Now you can see here, it says rails 4x development standards guidelines. So this document's a little old. Um, and if you look at the branches here, uh, there's only branches going up to, um, you know, rails 5x. A lot of these guidelines in this document are still very, uh, relevant and good things to follow. You know, especially if you're not sure, this could be a good default uh, set of guidelines to go to. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. You know, he talks about uh, Yagni and Kiss. Yagni being you ain't going to need it. Uh, Kiss being uh, keep it stupid simple or keep it simple stupid. You know, basically just a principle to keep things simple. Okay. There's other stuff about documentation, general guidelines. These are things that you may have seen from a Sandy Metz, for example. Uh, classes, you know can be no longer than 100 lines of code, methods no longer than five lines, et cetera, et cetera. But what we're gonna be focusing on here is this model section, okay? So there's two initial guidelines in here. Uh, at the beginning here, two initial bullet points, uh, never use dynamic finders uh, and use extreme caution when using callbacks and observers and why you wanna be cautious with them as they uh, tend to typically lead to unwanted coupling. But the main piece that we're going to focus on in this section is this part right here. Okay. So this block of code here basically represents the hierarchy of how you should order things uh, within your model files. Okay. So we start with anything that we uh, extend within our model class uh, right here with the extends, then our includes, uh, any relationships, validations, callbacks, scopes, additional config. These are your things like accepts nested attributes for and et cetera. Class methods, all your public instance methods protected instance methods and private instance methods. Okay. Now these are great guidelines. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hop over to some code and try to apply these things. And in the process, I'm going to point out that while uh, these are great guidelines, uh, we're going to see why they are guidelines uh, because there are a couple of gotchas here, really one main one uh, that we'll uncover. And then we'll see some other things too uh, as we get into the relationship section as we start uh, trying to order things there. 